Welcome to this video on medical waste management, the first of two on this topic. Healthcare facilities are a means to protect public health by treating patients and controlling the associated spread of infection. This generates waste, which needs to be managed and such activity entails some risk. Medical waste management is a set of measures to address those risks. In this first video, we will focus on data to be collected in order to design a proper medical waste management system. You will learn how to identify medical waste risks, how to classify different types of medical waste, and finally, how to estimate their production. If you deal with medical waste, you will usually start with something like this. Normal waste mixed with dressing, needles, vials, and sometimes anatomical parts. It can quickly transform into something like this, or something more insidious. In these pictures, years of wild dumping have formed a series of layers of needles, catheter, plastic, and sharp objects, something that you might happily discover when you start a building site. Or something even more treacherous. Look at this picture. These kids are dredging the bed of this urban channel to sell at the market fine sand for plastering purpose. Problem is that they are downstream the main hospital in town, where X-ray development liquid is dumped directly into the sewage. Such liquid contains something that is called absorbable organic iodinated compounds, which are toxic to both human and animal and can contain formaldehyde, a known human carcinogen. And of course, you will also deal with the waste area where incineration happens and where a lot of smoke is produced, usually something not particularly appreciated by the neighboring communities. And of course, activities should be controlled, otherwise quite serious accidents might occur. Trying to be a bit systematic, medical waste can be meaningfully divided into categories based on the level of risk associated, as it is done in this WHO table. Thanks to such a distinction, it becomes clear that medical waste management is first and foremost a set of risk mitigation practices. This is the point defining the public health twofold scope of medical waste management. The contamination risk associated to infectious waste is properly contained inside the hospital site. All the hospital users and the communities around the healthcare facilities are kept safe along the process. In fact, medical waste products can provide the vector for the transmission of infection, both inside and outside the perimeter of an healthcare facility. This chart illustrates the relation between the sources, the environment, the vector of transmission related to medical waste that helps the spreading of infection. Maybe at this point it's also important to state what medical waste management is not. It's not cleaning or hygiene promotion. Yes, of course, the activities are all related. They concur to the overall same objective. But it is important to stress that the specific and unique scope of infection risk reduction embedded into waste management. Multiple medical waste solutions can be proposed. The best will always be the one that reduces the overall risk of infection for all the community of users involved. Okay, now, after some theory, let's try to be a bit more operational. Let's classify medical waste in a way that is functional to how we deal with it. Of course, it is easier to say than to do. The nature of the waste products, their treatment requirements, their occurrence or not in a given context have created quite a lot of different classifications. Here we see the one used by the ICRC. This is the one from MSF. And finally, the one from WHO. At the end, really, there is no conceptual difference. It's just a matter of terminology. For this video, I will use the terms proposed by the WHO. Sharps, infectious, and pathological waste. And for simplicity, I will call chemical waste everything referring to pharmaceutical, cytotoxic, chemical, and radioactive waste. 
waste quantity varies a lot according to the country. This WHO chart shows how total medical waste, the squares, and the infectious one, the dots, vary according to the gross national income. As you see, we are talking about a variability that spans from 6, even 8 kilos per bed per day to just one. Another factor is the type of health facility you are considering. The table here, also from a WHO publication, illustrates for three different countries the average waste production rates per type of facility. And as again, you can see really big variation. So at this point, something is clear. If you have a real world case, the best thing to do is to start a measure campaign to know how much waste is actually produced. A waste mapping exercise per category and per quantity. Each waste product should be identified where it's produced and how it moves within the hospital. Here are the results of such a mapping exercise for sharps. Here is for infectious and pathological waste. For example, you can see how the operating theater, the dot in the middle of the plan, is a big producer in this category. And finally, chemical waste. In this case, biggest producer are the lab and the radiology department. In conclusion, to recapitulate this video, we can say that there are different ways of classifying medical waste, but what really matters is the risk associated to each category. The quantity of waste produced in an healthcare facility depends on the level of medical care and the type of facility concern. Among the quantity produced, about 10 to 25% is considered hazardous medical waste or special waste. This entails significant potential health risk. The rest is considered as general waste, similar to a household waste. Given the high variability of data, quantity should be measured and not estimated. Finally, the assessment should also include where the waste is produced. Based on all this information, we can look on how to implement a medical waste management system.